Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while since I put up a video on YouTube and uh, with 2019 I want to keep posting more videos and share my makeup routine and the products that I use and everything with you guys. So uh, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to glam during winter season. Beauty routine during winter season needs to be slightly changed as opposed to how it used to be during summer because during summer you tend to sweat a lot, makeup tends to run, you tend to use more waterproof makeup which is very drying and if you use the same routine uh, during winter it's not gonna really work because during winter your skin tends to get more dry, more flaky. So uh, in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how you can glam your face during winter. One of the most important things during winter is skincare. No matter what kind of products you use, if your skin isn't really doing well, it's not going to look good. So invest a lot of time with your skincare. One of the most important things you need to keep in mind related to skincare is exfoliation and cleansing. During winter, like I said, your skin tends to be more flaky and dry and you need to constantly keep removing this excess dry skin I use this device to cleanse my face uh, regularly. Now this is uh, a cleansing device by the brand Foreo. Uh, it's made of silicone and it has these ridges all over. So what you can do is you can apply your face wash onto these ridges here, turn it on and run it all over your face. Now what this does is, it because of the vibration that comes through it, it penetrates uh, deep within your skin and cleanses and exfoliates at the same time. So whenever I do this, I can immediately feel the difference. My skin feels so much softer and so much plumper. And uh, I also make sure that I keep my skin well moisturized. So at the moment, I've cleansed my face, toned and applied moisturizer. During winter season, I don't like to cake on the makeup. I try to keep the base as minimalistic as possible because I want my skin to look very natural and dewy. So what I do is I mix a little bit of my favorite foundation. This is the LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation. Uh, my favorite moisturizer which is the Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream and a liquid highlighter. The liquid highlighter that I use is by Makeup Revolution. It actually comes in a dropper bottle but then I broke the bottle so I had to put it into one of these plastic containers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the moisturizer, a teeny pump of the foundation just so that I get like a bit of coverage and a teensy bit of the liquid highlighter. I'm gonna take my foundation brush, like a flat brush like this. I'm just gonna mix it all up. Now, this is what it looks like. If you feel like it's too thick and you want to like bring it down a bit, just add a few drops of uh, face oil. So this is the face oil that I use regularly. It's by Plums. They're grapeseed and sea buckthorn oil. Put like a teeny drop of the face oil as well. And I'll mix it all up. What I'll do is I'll just apply it onto my face. But don't worry about the brush strokes. You can use a beauty sponge and get rid of the brush strokes. Now what this technique does is, it just evens out your skin tone. And it gives you that really luminous, hydrated, glowy look. Bring it down a little on your neck. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but my skin is super dewy at the moment. Now this doesn't really cover up the hyperpigmentation. Like you can see, I have hyperpigmentation on my cheeks, around my mouth. So uh, for that, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of foundation to those target areas, you know, just to counter the hyperpigmentation. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of foundation, just a tiny. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to tell you what shade this is in. This is in the shade bronze. It's like a perfect match for me. 
So I have a wet beauty sponge over here. So I'll just take that foundation on the sponge and apply it to all the areas I need a little bit of coverage, which is around the mouth, on my cheeks. Now hyperpigmentation is something that comes with melanin skin girls. I mean, you really can't help it. You just have to embrace it and work with what's given to you. I remember I used to be like excessively depressed when I used to think about uh, the hyperpigmentation like around my mouth and uh, cheeks and things like that. And now that that's all blended out, you need to really address your under eye circles. There's no amount of sheer foundation or luminous foundation that's going to address that. So for that I'm going to use a concealer just on the under eyes. I'm not going to apply it like to all my highlight zones. So this is uh, Maybelline's Instant Age Rewind Concealer. See, it's empty. I'm out of it. And it's in the shade Caramel. I mean, I swear to God, I've, I've been like waiting for them to come out with my shade because all the shades were too pale. And this was something that works really well for me. I'm just going to apply it to my under eyes just to clean it. And I'm going to blend it out with my sponge. Whatever excess is on my sponge, I'm just going to blend it out around my nose. And that's about it. Now you need to set the concealer. I'm not going to set the whole of my face. I'm just going to set my concealer because I still want that dewy finish to come through. So I'll just apply a bit of uh, translucent powder. This is the RCME No Color Powder. Just a thin see bit so that my concealer does not um, uh, crease. Also the areas where I crease which is around my mouth and a bit on my forehead. It's like a fluffy brush like this one. You just remove that excess powder. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a setting spray. I mean this is not a setting spray, it's a fix fixing spray. Uh, it necessarily does not make your makeup last longer but it makes your uh, base look very bulletproof and seamless so that's what this does I mean with dry skin girls we don't really have a problem of makeup not lasting on our face so I usually don't use alcohol based setting sprays I just use max uh, prep and prime so what I do is with every layer of powder that I apply I spritz my face with this uh, spray so that you know uh, each layer of powder melts into each other now this is a tip that I found from Jacqueline Hill I mean she is my ride or die I mean I really love her she's like the person who inspired me to get into makeup and you know it's amazing so like I was saying I'm just gonna spritz my face once you don't want to spritz too much like you don't want your face to be wet so while that's drying I thought I should prep my eyelids with a little bit of concealer just a teeny bit So now that's done, I'm just going to set it a bit with the same translucent powder. I'm just going to bronze my face. Now for bronzer, I, I have two products that I regularly use. One is the Mineralize Skin Finish by MAC in the shade Dark. I use this uh, product like for days when I don't want my bronzer slash contour to look too harsh but I want a more natural finish and on days when you know I want cheekbones that can cut a bitch I use uh, the MAC Studio Fix powder in the shade NW45 I'm gonna pick this up on a bronzer brush or a, this is actually a blush brush but I love it for bronzing 
So today I'm gonna pick out the Studio Fix powder and I'm just gonna hit the hollows of my cheeks. Now that my face is all bronzed, I'm going to spritz my face again. I don't know if you can see on camera, but my skin looks super dewy and I'm totally living for it. Dewy skin always looks more youthful than matte skin does. But also dewy skin can only look good on people who actually have no texture. I mean, if you have bumps on your face, like acne scars and bumps and things, and if you have like a dewy finish going on, it's going to accentuate all that texture. So uh, for textured skin, matte uh, finish is always best. And for people who have like smoother skin but drier, luminous finish or dewy finish is just kick-ass. It looks really good. So next, now that I'm done with bronzing, I'm going to apply blush which is like one of my favorite things to do at the moment. I remember there was a time when I never used to apply blush. What is I thinking? Yeah, so um, this is from the Jaclyn Hill Becca collaboration. It's her face palette. So uh, she has three blushes in here. One is a luminous blush uh, and this one. A luminous blush, a neutral blush and a pink blush. So today I want to go for the luminous one because I'm trying to make my face look super dewy. on my nose again I'm gonna mist my face you know so that the powder settles down now once the spray is like all set I want to apply highlighter so a uh, highlighter it depends on my mood like if I'm in the mood like to look like a disco ball I always go for champagne pop which is this one sorry this one uh, it's like super shiny. I mean, it's for day. It's not for the regular girl. And on days when I don't feel like, you know, sticking out like a disco ball, I go for this uh, bronzer. It's actually a bronzer, but then I like to use the lighter shades here to highlight my face. This is by uh, Makeup Revolution, and it's their triple big bronzer in the shade Hot Summer of Love. So the first thing you need to do when it comes to eye makeup is you need to lay out your transition area. So uh, for that, I'm just gonna pick out a fluffy blending brush. And um, this is yet another Jaclyn Hill palette. So this is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe uh, eyeshadow palette. So you can see these colors over here. They're all neutrals. They're all uh, shades of brown, like different shades of brown. So I usually pick these two, one of these two, as a transition shade. So pick it up on your fluffy brush and just lay it out. If you don't know what a transition area is, it's basically the area between your brow bone and your lid space. The reason why you need to lay out your transition area first is so that your eyeshadow looks like much more blended. So apply it with windshield wiper motions, like I've said multiple times in many of my videos. So the same on the other eye as well. It's a very subtle difference, but that difference makes or breaks your eye makeup look. Now that the transition is all laid out, we can move on to deepening up the crease. So for that I'm using a darker brown. Probably this brown right here. So that particular brown I'm gonna apply like with a much denser brush. I'm just gonna blend it out. Now we can move on to the lid color. Okay, let's switch up palettes, no? I mean, I always use the Jaclyn Hill palette. So, now this is uh, a palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Prism palette. And it's like so pretty. It has all these colors which are like so inspirational. I mean, it inspires you to play with color. 
this shade right here called Dimension. It's like a silvery purple. So I'm just gonna pick it up on a flat eyeshadow brush like this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna spritz it with a spray. Same setting spray so that you know it intensifies the glow. I'm just gonna apply it to the centers, center part of my eyelid. Wow, it's like a duochrome guys. It's also got like pink reflex. I don't know if you can see it, but it's stunning. And once my brush barely has any pigment, I'm just going to bring it to the inner corners. I mainly want to focus the eyeshadow on the center of my eyelid. Wow, it's stunning. It's like so pretty. I'm just realizing it's got pink reflex. I want to deepen up the outer corners of my eyes. So I'm going to go back into the Jaclyn Hill palette and probably pick up this brown. Uh, I mean, this is a brown with purple undertones so that, you know, it ties together with the lip color. I'm just gently gonna pack it onto my outer corners. So, uh, what you need to know is whenever you are applying eyeshadow on the outer corner, don't go too far above your crease. Always start out close to your lash line and you can slowly bring it up. The problem is if you go far too above your uh, crease, it's just gonna make it look really messy, really fast. Now, there's a little bit of fallout here. So I'm just gonna remove it with like a brush like this. what you can do is you can go back into your foundation powder foundation like the studio fix powder and take it on a brush like this and so you can intensify the outer corner a little more so for that I'm just gonna pick out a little bit of black it's the shade obsidian in the Anastasia palette Now, if you feel like your outer corner is looking a little muddy, you can go back to uh, the fluffy brush that you used initially, pick up that um, transition shade again and just gently blend it out. Now we can move on to the lower lash line and for the lower lash line I'm just gonna uh, take like a pencil brush like this, go into the same transition shade that we used earlier and apply it to the lower lash line. After that, you can intensify uh, that lower lash line a bit more. A flat definer brush like this one. Go into a brown with purple undertones. I'm only gonna define the outer corner. I don't want to bring it all the way inside. So I'm just gonna define the outer corners and bring it out a bit so that my eye has more of a cat eye shape it's really flattering if you have like big eyes so just slowly wing it out once you barely have any product left now depending on whether I want my eyes to look like really smoky and intense I'll either apply kajal or I'll just leave it as it is. Now today I want my eyes to look a little bigger than they normally look. I'm going to pick up a small pencil brush like this one and pick up a white shade, either these two and I'm going to apply it on my waterline. Just apply it like how you would apply kajal. Now if you have a flesh toned um, eyeliner you can use that as well but I like doing this. just makes my eyes look more doll-like and big. So I'm just gonna curl my lashes because you have to curl your lashes guys. It makes such a big difference. It makes your eyes look much more open and lifted and awake. Yeah. Now mascara, this mascara you guys, it's the Voluminous Lash Paradise Mascara by L'Oreal. 
it's like a godsend in the world of mascaras. I mean, it's amazing. It's like it's thickening, it's lengthening, it's not clumpy. It's just perfect. The only problem is it's super hard to take off because it's a waterproof formula. I don't think they have like a washable formula in this. So, taking it off is such a hassle. I always have like mascara remnants on my lashes. No matter how hard I try. I forgot to tell you guys about my brow routine. So, you need to brush out your brows. Product I use for my brows is the MAC eyeshadow in the shade Brune. The beauty about this eyeshadow is it's just the perfect shade for your brows. I mean, it's not too warm. Most browns, brown eyeshadows that you see have like a red or uh, orange undertone, whereas this is a cool toned brown, so it's perfect for your lashes. So I'm just gonna touch up my lashes a bit. I like my lashes to look natural, so I don't like to go in like with a pencil, a brow pencil or you know, products like that because I like to keep them as natural as possible. So I just fill out the sparse areas of my brow. What lipstick should I use you guys? So uh, this is an ultra satin lipstick by Colourpop in the shade Misbehaving. I love the ultra satin formula, but the only issue is it's not transfer proof so you can't really kiss someone without it messing everything up. So that's it guys, this is a take on my winter glam makeup. I mean, you can glam it up a lot more using glitter, false lashes, you can play it up. But I just wanted to show you guys how I do my base makeup during winters. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned to my channel. I'll keep uploading more videos. I mean, it's a resolution that I've taken in 2019 that I'm going to keep posting more. So thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys. Bye.